Radiography of the cervical spine. There's particular approaches that you can do that actually sort of are much more efficient, that produce better quality x-rays, that minimise the actual dose of the patient. So I'd just like to take you through some of those things. And also my particular approach to radiography, which is not centering point based, it's more collimator based. The first view, of course, is the AP cervical spine. We angle up about 15 degrees, we turn the light on, and we work out basically how much of the film we want to expose, and then we adjust the height of the machine so it suits the patient. Now, with my system, because the collimator is set, I move this just so that I can show her ear, and then I can just move my film up behind there to there, and say that's pretty much right there, that's all good. Collimate in, put it across, and chin up just a tiny bit and make sure it's all straight. That's too much there. That's all good. Okay, so that's pretty much our first, our first x-ray there. That's our, our um, AP cervical. Now we'll just go straight into our obliques. The tube is still in its position, angling up 15 degrees. So let's turn our patient to 45 degrees with the shoulders here. The head around, chin up. I'll move the height of the machine just a bit higher. Uh, go up to there. I'll just move my... We just move the patient up to there. Again, we have to work out a collimation. We have our film. We go up to the middle of the film. Film is right. Our collimation goes just above the ear hole. We can collimate in. Move the patient back just a tiny bit so that we, we don't expose the thyroid here. It's important the thyroid doesn't get primary beam. You don't see that in the books. But that's about the right angle. 45 degrees of the shoulders. So that's our next position. We rotate around the other side for the other oblique, 45 degrees for the shoulders here, head turn around again, collimation again, so that we exclude the thyroid from a direct dose. We're going down the clavicle here, so it's all long. Next view is the lateral. Let's go to a straight tube, still 180 centimetres. I open up wide so I get the collimation correct again. So I want just perhaps a tiny more to there. Move the patient around to the lateral position. The, my only positioning point on this is where the top of my exposed beam would be, which is just above the ear hole. The film there is lowered so that it matches that. Goes back in, collimating quite tight. When it's tight collimated, I then push slightly forward so that the thyroid does not receive a direct exposure. There'll still be some thyroid dose from the scattered beam, but no direct exposure. So that's my particular technique there. We then go into the open mouth position. Generally speaking, it's about 15 degrees between the eye and the ear line, so I'll just turn the head a tiny bit up and go out wide. The correlation will be about that size. The top of it will be just above the teeth. I don't want to expose the thyroid, I'm not expose the thyroid at all there. Collimate in, open your mouth very wide there, and Make sure we're in the middle. That's all good. The only time you do a wider view for this particular one is for a chiropractic series where they might need to see the, um, the mastoid air cells behind the ears. So that's your basic five film series for a cervical spine. The next one I'd like to show is the swimmer's view. It's one that's done particularly badly. Badly in the sense that they're almost always poorly collimated and ex massive exposure to the actual thyroid and sometimes even the sternum and, and also the face. So the way you approach this, a shorter focus to film distance, about 120 centimetres, we work in that collimation first. So I'll have my, my patient standing sort of quite straight there and I'm looking at the way the light shines down, I'm looking at how much of a, of a size I want to actually appear on the film. So this is the actual proportions here. And I'm now going to go down and say, where, where is this junction between the cervical spine and the thoracic? And it's exactly there. So that's not going to change at all when my patient is positioned. 
And now I'm just going to do my combination. I'm going to move it forward just a tiny bit more. Can you raise this arm above your head? Keep one down low and press against there. And that is our positioning for the for a very tightly collimated swimmers here. So that has to be right. Even though it looks like a little tiny window there shining on her, we know that it lines up with this particular part, this particular junction between thoracic and cervical. We know that that's all lined up with the film. We're not using guesswork here. We're using specific calculations, knowledge that we are right in our position. And so that is the swimmer's view. 